All right, everyone, now that we figured out how to get the Vive controller input uh, into our own scripts, we're going to take a minute and see if we can't figure out how to get this use manager to work properly with everything we're doing. Now, at the moment, our use manager, let's go over there and take a look at it. The use manager itself is doing a raycast, and the raycast, of course, hits an object whenever we press a particular button. Yes, please format, that's fine. So over here, we have our update. We do an input.getMouseButton up. Uh, we then cast into the room, and then we use whatever object is necessary. Now, given the way we're doing things, um, since the controllers are actually doing everything, the use manager really has no sense of existing in a Vive setup, at least not in the way it is. This functionality can be written over instead into our Vive controllers. Now, the Vive controllers will probably be... Uh, We'll probably do a lot of different functionality, and if we get that far, we can have the Vive controller contain an object. That is how its button interface reacts to other objects. But for the moment, all we really want to do is start using our casting behavior to be a trigger button that is pressed. And when that trigger button is pressed, um, it will attempt to use the object, very similar to what we're doing here. Actually, we no longer need this stuff. Let's get rid of it while we can. So it's going to do this use thing after gaining the object. Now, another thing, though, is the fact that, of course, we have two controllers, and when those controllers move around and they hit another object, or they, well, they need a collider on them, and I'm going to use a trigger collider at the moment. So as it moves around, it will interface with another object, it will collide with another object, a trigger, on trigger enter will be fired, and I need to record the object it clicks. And then when the on trigger is done, or it moves out of that range, we'll we will replace that, that reference with a null value, so that if I do click it, nothing will actually happen. So, let's get started. Now, I kind of want to make this thing smart. I want to be able to choose between the Use Manager and the Unity Engine Vive uh, Manager instead. So, to do that, what I'm thinking of doing is, let's see, this interface usable needs to exist. Um, that's because other people are using it. Go to File, Build Settings, actually, Player, right? Player Settings. Come on, Player Settings. There we go. And... Uh, uh, scripting defined symbols, and that symbol is going to be save. Great. No, oh, this needs to be, of course, up here. That'd probably be a good thing to have. Actually, I'm probably just. I think it's just the update function I don't want to have occur. And actually, this raises a couple concerns now. I'm trying to think. Um, the update function doesn't need to happen. So really, I could probably, in start, do this. Instead of actually removing code, I could do this. Right? In start, I could say, if this is, I could just say that this should not be enabled. So this dot, um, let's write this right outside of it. So if um, this dot enabled is equal to false. So this can't execute its update script which is really what I want to die. Let's do that. So if this, if Vive setup, if not Vive setup actually. So we want, if Vive setup do something, pound else do this. And this is going to be the thing that happens otherwise. So this way, when we build our game out, all we need to do is uh, define that symbol there. Let's do, that's not what I want. Vive setup. Now that Vive setup is defined, this is false and the use manager is going to be deactivated. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and make sure this happens. Hit run. And if we go to the use manager, the use manager itself, uh, the script is still active. I screwed up. So if, if the Vive setup is put together, what we want to have happen is we want to disable this node. Save this out, go back over here, make sure in our build settings, and our player settings, Vive setup is still there as a parameter. It is, perfect. Let's hit run. And what should happen is our use manager is now deactivated and we don't need to worry about that actually executing. Great. Okay, so now we're going to come over into our Vive controller itself. Now the Vive controller, so in update, instead of creating these spheres, what we're going to want to have happen is 
we're going to want to test, oh, actually we need a few different things. So first of all, we're going to want to do a couple Unity specific methods. So let's do Unity on trigger enter. So in Unity, what we're going to want to use are the monobehavior.onTrigger enter, on trigger exit, and uh, well, there's a couple of different ones. Let's let's see, let's go see if they list them all really quick. Here we go. So we want these three guys here: on trigger enter and on trigger exit. We're going to ignore stay at the moment. So those are the two magic methods we want to use. Uh, they are going to take in, of course, a collider object. So let's implement both of them really quick. On trigger enter, which brings in a collider. We'll type the next one: void on trigger exit. And that, of course, also takes a collider, other, either, no, other. There we go. Okay, we're going to want to store the object that we collide with. Um, well, actually, no, we only want to store the object if it ends up being a usable object, because right now that's all we're dealing with at the moment are usable objects. So let's create a new variable. We're going to call this um, usable, uh, usable object. And of course, that's set to null at first. So usable object over here. Clean this up. So if we collide with another object, we're going to do usable object, of course. Uh, but before we get to there, we want to do um, usable temp is going to be equal to uh, other dot game object dot get component. And we're going to see whether that has a usable attached to it. If it does, we get that and store it in temp. Uh, so let's do that. If temp does not equal to is not equal to null, then we are going to store that object there. So usable object is going to be equal to temp. So the next thing is we need to exit the area. Now, it's possible we might be entering and exiting into different things. I don't know yet. Um, but what I want to make sure is that if I'm exiting an era, area, I'm actually exiting the area that I've entered and not just any area that I'm leaving. So we're going to have to do this same test again. So we're going to do a, a game other dot game component dot get component usable temp and we're going to see whether or not the area we just left so if uh, temp is equal to uh, other excuse me if if usable object is equal to temp that is it's the same object that we've left then I'm going to want to set usable object is equal to no and I may also in the future want to pass to the usable object itself that you have now left that area, in which case I would add uh, sort of an unuse or uh, not an unuse. I might need to add two new methods such as hovering and dehover to this object so I could send it that message. If I want some special effect to happen, like if, if I move my mouse over it and I want it to glow or if I want it to do, I, I, I don't know. Glowing is the easy thing, right? So if I move my mouse over it and I want it to glow, it'd be easier if I implement those methods on the object so it can handle hovering however we want it to. All right, so we store the object and we unstore it when necessary. Um, the next thing we need to do is, actually we need colliders for these objects and we'll do that in just a second, but really what I want to do is if, so on update, if we press the button down, the next thing I want to do Actually, before even pressing the button down, we should more easy test is probably just to see if usable object is equal to null. If it is, then we can do this part. Then uh, if it's, excuse me, not equal, not equal to null, if we have something and then we decide to press the button down, specifically the trigger, what are we going to do? We are going to fire off usable object dot use. Now, right now, usable object takes in a raycast hit, which is not good for us. So for the moment, what I'm probably going to do is remove the raycast component of the interface. Um, I'm not yet using it for anything, so it is just kind of superfluous, but I might need to come up with a different system in the future. So doing that, removing it there should be okay. Uh, the main thing I need to change, though, is actually that's... That should be all I need to change. Uh, but when I do implement use, I need to get rid of it in the other scripts. So let's go into scripts. Once it, there we are. Those are the errors that I want to deal with. So scripts, let's go to usable light and usable security door. Those implementations need to change. Uh, the raycast hits need to disappear for the moment. Um, I will think well, when I need to use it, I will think about the right way to implement this in the future.
But right now I am not using any of those hits, so it doesn't matter. So I can come back into Unity. My errors should now go away. Clear. Yes, they disappeared. Now I need colliders on my objects. So we already have colliders on the doors themselves. So if we click on this, uh, right now we'll turn that to a, uh, a triggerable. Same thing with the lower one. That's also triggered. Move on over here. Click this guy, trigger, and this guy is a trigger as well. Save that. And now we need my hands. So let's find the hands. That's going to be under the camera manager. And under camera manager, the camera system. And left and right hand. Now at this time, I'm not sure if I should be putting the collider on the model or the left controller itself. Let's just put it on the controller and see what happens. So let's add a collider. We'll do a... Um, let's do a sphere collider for the moment because those are pretty easy to calculate. And let's just do a radius of 0 0.1. I also don't know the pivot off the top of my head. Let's make that maybe 0.1 is actually a good fair size. So let's, uh, let's see. Can we copy this component and take it to the right side? And... No. Add component. We're going to do another sphere. Right and can we paste paste component is new okay so that's how that works let's remove that component okay so we've got both of those colliders um, these are triggers actually which means that these guys don't need to technically be triggers because they're not triggering anything but we're going to leave them as is at the moment and uh, let's do some some debugging here let's see if this actually works so in the in the vive controller itself let's do a printout when we enter and exit the location debug dot log um, we'll do a entered collider collider colon um, plus other dot name And let's do the same thing over here. And exit. But actually, I only want to know when I'm entering and exiting things that matter. So let's do it inside of here into our in our test. Save there as well. Okay. Good. Save. Okay, let's give this a go. So we're going to hit the run button. Before I put on this headset, I'm going to make sure nothing's broken. HMD not found. Okay, let me plug that back in. Here's hoping it doesn't crash Snagit. Snagit has a really bad time with some of this stuff. All right, let's give this another go. Let's hit play. All right, it found the HMD, so that's a good start. Let's move this into place. Move this over here. Grab my controllers, bring them out front. Put it on my face. Ugh. Partial tracking keeps coming in and out and uh, turn these on now. I'm just I'm remembering now that I don't actually come on, find you up there. We are. Remembering now that I don't actually have myself in the right space So I need to squint because my glasses are inside of this thing now grab my camera manager and Try to get me a little bit closer to what I'm trying to do and I probably should have done this So we're gonna move myself right about there Okay, so let's go back into play. And now I should be able to reach these objects. There we are. Found it. I just don't want to hit my actual, because it's right next to the actual thing. I'm going to, oh, I'm hitting things in real life. What? Oh, it lost tracking on that. Oh, uh -huh. damn it. All right. I'm trying to, I'm losing my control or the tracking. This is a very bad setup, by the way. Yeah, that's a wall. Jeez. Okay, my controller went. Up. All right, let's let's move me even closer. Okay. Uh, Vive development not necessarily good when you're also trying to record everything. Let's move me way close over here to that. And now take a look. Okay. All right. All right. Where am I? Okay. Now I'm right next to this thing. So beep 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 beep. beep. Did that do anything? Crap. I should probably just be lighting the thing. 
connected to Lighthouse, I have that. Let's go to uh, no collapsing. I have nothing being issued. Now, controller left has a trigger on it. Controller right has a trigger on it. Um, let's take another look really quick here. Let's go to our code. Uh, on trigger enter, on trigger exit might not be firing. So maybe I need to, let's do this out here really quick. Just make sure that works. Let's do the same out here. And I'm probably making a really stupidly small mistake. Entered collider. Uh, let's just say set collider. And then D set to differentiate between these two. Not that these are firing anyway. Uh, Vive controllers are right there. The model. Vive controller is right there. Sphere Collider is right there as well. Okay, let's give this another go. And I'm going to move this camera somewhere. It's actually, no, that's not right. There we go. I'm going to move this somewhere. It actually helps me out a bit. Somewhere like right there. Run. It's connected to Lighthouse. That's good. Clear that. Put this back on my face. Come on, tracking, please. Tracking. There we go. Both, please. There we go. Beep, 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 beep. I guess in a, in a true, technically, since if this was colliding, I would have things happening now, wouldn't I? So let's see my output. And of course, my debug output is nothing. So let's find out why. Let's go to the scene itself and zoom on in. Take a look at these things. So. Oh, you know what? I need a rigid body, don't I? Um, let's grab the... So let's put some rigid bodies on this thing. Camera manager left, right. Controller left, add component, rigid body. Um, mass drag, use gravity, is kinematic. Yes. And left, rigid body as well, is kinematic. And let's try this again. Run. And strap it to my face. I wish I, if I had another one of these things, I would make, I'd like cut the back out of it. So it just, anyway. Uh, okay, so controllers are back. Hey, there we go. Look at that. I, boop, boop. It opens. Boop, 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 boop. Sweet. So we've got the beginning going. So I can open my doors. Well. All right, so I seem to run into a little bit of a problem. Um, I had to stop recording for a second there because I hit something with the Vive. But uh, the issue seems to be that I'm, it's no longer functioning. It worked for a little bit, and then things just stopped working. So let's, I'm still in the same play scene. So let's go back in here. Yeah, so the button is not functioning. Oh, you know what? Did we hit zero power? Crap. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. <laughs> All right, it is working. It's just I forgot I made the power requirements. So, oh, we're falling through the world. I can't see the Vive's headset. So it looks like, let's go to the scene view. Yeah, the game view, um, the managers are probably shut down, right? So we come over here and power manager is off. Use manager is also off. So that that's what happened. All right, of course it's off. We have Vive mode on. But power manager is off, which means the light switches are not working either. Okay, great. So th this is... This is perfect. So we did exactly what we wanted to do. Um, now the big problem that I'm facing is I need to find some way of working with this thing and having enough play space to actually play. In addition, we're going to have to start thinking of other things with the Vive. Um, that is dynamically changing the size of this room. Uh, right now it's, it's pretty large. I might end up moving the buttons themselves to the other side of this area between the window panes and the desk. That way, you know, I'm going to have to think about it because... That, who, oh, how will that change gameplay? That's, that's the question. Not being able to see those doors themselves because you do look to the doors at times to see them right inside it or right, right next to it. Well, it's something to experiment with in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. So we got our use manager working now with the Vive so that we can turn the lights on and the doors on and off as well or up and down. Check in next time. I have no idea what I'm going to start working on, but it's going to be something good. Bye.